Hi, I'm back at you with another video and today's video we're going to be looking at how to set up and take your own photos. So if you are interested, keep on watching. Now if this is the first time that you've seen this channel or you just come to the channel, my name is John of J.W.S. Millinery and I make videos on hats, how to make hats and other hat related things. So um, yeah, don't mind me while I'm with my fabulous fabric. I love this one. This is probably one of my favourites. I'm trying to figure out what to do with it. It's, oh, it's just amazing. Um, but yes, so today we are going to be um, looking at how to, how I how I take my own photos. Um, I'm not a professional photographer. I don't claim to be a professional photographer, but um, yeah, I think while we're on lockdown, I think, you know, it's good for us to know how to take our own photos. And um, I'm gonna show you how I take mine. So the first thing you wanna think about is um, your equipment. What do you already have? Um, I use sometimes my smartphone, which is an iPhone 7, so I will use this in a pinch. I also have a DSLR camera. So this is a, a Nikon D3100. It's basic, basic level camera. It came with this lens and a different lens. It's a very basic camera. I've had it a few years now. In fact, it was how I used to film my very first YouTube videos. So, and it records for like 10 minutes. Um, so I have that. Um, I also have what I'm filming on now. So this is a Sony Handycam and it does take really good um, HD level photos. So that's also an option as well. So that's the three things that I use to take the photos, but we've also got other equipment that you would use. You've also got to think about lighting. So I'm very lucky in this place. I am in a room where all the walls are white. Um, I don't get a lot of sunlight coming into this particular room. That's why I've not really done anything about using natural light. Um, so my lighting setup is I have a ring light and I have two of these soft boxes, um, which are not expensive at all. And I'll pop um, a link to them in the description box below. I think in, in total, I probably paid 200 pounds, maybe a little bit more for all this setup. Um, that was including all the different stands. Um, and then what I also decided to get was a tripod for my DSLR camera. So, it just helps sturdy that when needed. And a recent thing that I've actually invested in is a, let me just, so this is a, it's a Moza Mini S um, camera stand put for smartphones. So if you're using your smartphone for anything, this is actually pretty good. Um, and I'll also link that in the description box below. Um, and yeah, so that's my equipment. Um, I'll go into what I actually do when I'm taking photos. Okay, so the first thing that you want to uh, sort of, what I do is I set up my lights. So if you look here, um, I've got my actual, I've got my actual, Thing here which I want to photograph and then I have one softbox at one side one softbox at another side and they are angled at a 45 degree angle to the actual hat so what this will do is this will um, put light and shadow where it needs to be and it will stop the shadows at the back so if I just to zoom in for you let's see if, there you go if I just turn off one of these lights, you can see, if I just put the ring light in, 
it's giving shadow. Um, but if we turn the lights on, and this one, it takes away that shadow. I mean, it's still a little bit of a shadow, but it stops majority of that shadow from showing. Likewise, if you want to turn off, if you don't want to get the ring light, it's not so bad. If you look, there's no shadow. Um, that shadow's just gone. So sometimes, depending on the situation, a direct light isn't, isn't suitable for this. In fact, I'm actually going to not use that. And let me grab my phone. I'm going to take a photo using my phone and in fact let's let's zoom in there. So I'll, you'll be able to see now exactly what those photos look like without any editing. That's literally just um, me taking photos with the two ring light, with the two soft boxes. Uh, and then what I would then do is go into um, an editing app, which we'll cover at the end of this video. And, uh, um, and edit them. If you're lucky enough though to have a DSLR camera like me, um, I'm going to show you how the photos look different on a camera than they do to a smartphone camera. So um, same setup as before, so if I just put you in so you'll be able to see. Same setup as before, um, two soft boxes and instead we're using the DSLR camera and we're doing it on uh, portrait, so portraits um, thing, and we'll just turn it on. Oh, what's going on? Hello, oh, it's on. There we go. And you can either use this or you can use the the this viewfinder. I tend to find that very easy to use with, and uh, just like set it up. In fact, a bit too I tend to try and have some enough around the photo because for some strange reason my other um, my other lens isn't working today um, and just have it on autofocus and it takes a relatively decent photo now I have been playing around with this recently and um, I find that sometimes the photo doesn't come out exactly how I like it. So I play with the balances of things, um, with the focus, with the, you know, with loads of different things. Play with your camera, um, what we gonna, let's put it on auto mode. So this is like an auto. Let's have a look, let's see what that looks like. To be fair, that doesn't look too bad. I don't know if, how you guys are seeing this on your screen, but it's actually not looking too, too bad. A little bit too much shadow here for my liking. Um, which that could be fixed by putting a ring light in. So let's see what, let's see what this does. Right, let's have a look and see what that's done. Um, I think that's softened that a little bit. If you look, there's no shadow 
here still. So um, depending on your setup, you know, that's why sometimes I'll take pictures with the phone. Majority of the time that I do take pictures with this DSLR camera. Um, you can get decent ones and I'm gonna to link to everything in the description box below. So then you'll be able to, uh, uh, you'll be able to see and buy what, what I'm using. Um, this is how I do it though. I'm not a professional photographer at all. Um, a lot of this is through trial and error, through doing it myself, from just learning and just learning really. Um, so once you've got your photos all together, you're ready to edit. If you need any more information on how to deal with um, a DSLR camera, then I'll link a really quite a few resources down in the description box below. Um, like I say, I'm not a pro at this, so I, I get help wherever I can. Um, but once you've taken your photos, obviously you need to make them a little bit better because you can never take perfect photos. So what we're gonna do is, we're, first of all, we're going to edit photos that you've taken on your phone, and then I'm going to go into how to edit photos using Photoshop. So let's crack on with the phone. So these are the three photos that we've taken. This one is the phone, the photo taken with the um, iPhone. This is the one taken from the DSLR camera and this is the one taken using the uh, video camera. So you can kind of see the, the difference um, between them. Um, not a lot of difference really, um, but the, you know, s slight subtle differences. So you decide which one you want to go and which route you want to go down. But now we're going to move on to editing. So first of all, we're going to start off with editing using your phone. So this is ideal for when you've taken pictures using your phone, just to edit them, so to upload to say, Instagram, Facebook, or anything like that. If you're doing any major works, if you're doing photos for say your website, for product shots, I probably would use Photoshop. So we're going to edit this one on the phone. And then we are going to edit the camera one on in Photoshop. So let's crack on and look at the fun first of all. So this is the one we're going to take and um, we're going to edit that. So like I said, this is using an iPhone. So if you're using anything different, then, you know, I, I don't use Android. So um, hit edit. And first of all, what we're going to do is I notice that it's not perfectly straight. So I'm going to straighten that a little. Yep, that looks fine to me. And then I don't, I mean, you could use auto, but it, it, as you can see, it kind of gives it a warmer feel. So I tend to go into things and do them differently. So your best bet is to just go in and play around with with things. Now looking at it, it's a little dark. So we're just gonna lighten it up ever so slightly. Look, if you, cause you start losing de like definition in the eyes there. So I'm just gonna maybe give it like, I don't know, maybe 10, 10 or 11. And then I'm just going to play around and see what looks good. So this, this makes all your whites brighter and all your darks darker contrast I'll probably leave it around there brightness um, I always put my brightness quite up because it, it makes your background look really nice and white I have no idea what black point is and then I, with all my photos I give it just a little boost in saturation and a little boost in vibrance. And the thing is, that's a, that's roughly the colors that it actually is. 
um, it's sometimes hard to show on camera um, on a photo sorry so uh, what I've realized is if you look at the bottom left there is just the edge of the box that I used so we're just going to crop that out And that is done. Like I said earlier, using the phone to edit your photos is, is fine for something like Facebook, Instagram um, posts, or something, you know, to put on a blog or something like that. But if you want something a little bit more detailed, something that you can use for product shots, best off using Photoshop. There are other things as well, but I use Photoshop, so I'm just gonna show you what I do with that. And let's, go to the computer and we'll deal with that now. This is the image that we're going to be working with. And first of all, we want to just straighten this up. So, um, we just want to straighten that up but there. Perfect. Looking a lot straighter. And then we just want to brighten it up a little bit so I'd say maybe I mean that's great but it's a bit too bright but if we put contrast in it it adds back some of that colour <coughs> I'm happy with that one thing I'm not happy with is this this here so we're gonna get rid of that and we'll get rid of that. Make sure it's still kind of centered. Perfect. And this is a perfect product shot. I mean, the, doing it on Photoshop is so much easier, I, f I feel, because you can get a bit more precise uh, because you're using a mouse as opposed to your finger. Um, as a product shot, I would be happy with that. And you could save that and use this. But what I would like to do is show you how to cut away from the background so you can use it in other items. So to get an actual image of just the product itself, no background, nothing else, then I um, always work with the original image because we, st we have um, the old image so the, the one we've just made is saved separately. We, so what I would do is if you're, if you're working on multiple images from the same image, save it a, a couple of times, duplicate it, so then you, you don't ruin your, your original image. So we're not gonna crop it, we're not gonna do anything with it, we're not gonna brighten it, we're gonna brighten it later. But initially we're gonna cut this away from the background. And that's really easy, it's, it's time consuming, to do it correctly but we're going to give it a go so here is a tool called magic eraser and if you click on certain areas it will delete that look so my tolerance seems to be a bit too high so i'm going to give it a tolerance of two there we go so it's starting to be a lot more tolerant of what it's pulling. It's fine. So it's not pulling anything from the neck. That's fine. Let's put that tolerance up to four. Yeah, it's, it's pulling more now. Right, so I'm gonna keep going on with this until I've pulled out all the background and then I'll be back with you once that is done. Now, I just wanted to take this time while this video is editing to speak to you about Patreon. Now, what is Patreon, you may ask? Patreon is um, a website where creators can connect a bit more with their fans, with their subscribers, and in return, 
the subscribers pay a small monthly donation to help that creator succeed in what they're doing. Now, I know times are hard and not everybody can afford to, but um, I have set up a Patreon. I have three tiers. So my first tier at one pound per month is I like what you do tier. Second tier at five pounds per month is I love what you do tier. And the third tier at 10 pounds per month is I stand what you do tier. So hit Patreon, the link down below and um, check it out. It's, I'm still gonna produce content, but this content is expensive to produce. So any help would be very grateful. Okay, so we now have the entirety of that hat taken away from the background. Now you, there's still a lot here, so we're gonna change that to uh, like an eraser. So we'll just erase anything. Just be careful. What I would do is do, like when you're not near the hat, you can hold and it will just erase everything. But when you get closer, just do small clicks, just so you don't remove any of the, the actual hats. I've made that mistake many times. Right, then, so we're just gonna go around and do that. I'll be back with you. And if you're a business and um, you wanna help out in any way, we have business Patreon levels as well. So we have a silver level at £25 per month and we have a gold level at £50 per month. But this is not geared to those people, this is geared to my fans. So check the Patreon link down below. And then you wanna zoom in, make your brush a little bit smaller. And go around the hat, just cleaning up that edge. As best you can. The more work that you put in at this stage, the better. And there you go, you have one cut out piece. So um, what I then do is, you can just edit this. So we're just gonna um, straighten it up a little bit. There we go. And then we'll make the adjustments we would need to make. So we'll brighten it up. Add a bit of contrast. Okay. Then a one product shot. Now, this um, isn't ideal because you ideally you've got too much um, shadow here, but it also shows dimension. So that's you know that's one way to look at it as well. I like this shot though. This is this is I like this. Um, so if you wanted just this on its own. You bet I would save this as a 
PNG, that means it will have that transparent background. So, um, photo, no background. I just hit OK. Um, and then say you wanted to put this on a, another, like a, something on your website, you wouldn't maybe want to put it on a maybe slightly pastel background. So we've saved that. Oh, that's my recording software. So here in Illustrator, um, I already have something set up. So we're just going to change this color. We're going to change it to a nice pastel. And then, so you get to see my desktop. Uh, take with, for no background, here you go. So I'll drag that into here. And you can see that it looks, we'll just bring that in. It looks like it doesn't look bad. It looks nice on a different color background. Um, <clears throat> one thing I like to do, however, is take, so for example, this, we're going to fill with, so I need a, I need an eyedropper. So we'll take, for example, the pink. It's too contrasty. But if you were to take that pink and make it like a pastel, Ta -da! It's, it works because it, you're pulling from a color that's in there. So, little technical, little rambly. Um, this is how I like to have my photos. Um, and this is how I'm going to be doing them from now on. It's something I have been playing with. So, there you go. How to edit your photos in Photoshop. Well, there you have it. How to edit photos. How, how I edit my photos, not how to edit photos. This is how I edit my photos. Another technical uh, sort of kind of video, but it is milling related because obviously we need photos. Um, let me know if you like these types of videos because they do take a lot of time to um, to film and edit because there's a lot more technicalness to than just making a hat and being in front of a camera. I just wanted to make a bit of a statement that it's like, this doesn't replace people who can actually take photos professionally. I think there's, is it Mr. and Mrs. B on Facebook who have been taking a lot of photos for milliners. So this is not to take anything away from them. Obviously at the moment, people are at home, they maybe want to upload something to Facebook. It's just something so they can do something themselves. If you are able to, please make sure you support people who support us. So look, uh, reach out to photographers and get them to take professional. They will do all this work for you um, themselves and maybe with a model as well. But if you like this video, drop me a like and drop me a comment in the down below. All the links to all equipment mentioned and resources and everything is also linked in the description box below join me next week so we have what do we have next week we've got milliner showcase no millinery supply update on tuesday thursday i'll be live streaming and we're actually baking um so the live streams if you're not aware of live streams sometimes the live streams are milling related sometimes they're not so um next week we're going to be baking tiger king cupcakes you have to watch, keep it, you, know, you have to tune in for that. So on Friday, I'm thinking of having a um, 10 things to do while you're in lockdown um, for milliners. So thank you very much for joining me. All my socials are in the description box below and I will see you next week.